In this video we are going to talk about the plotting functions of R to plot graphs and uh, the plot function is a very complex and with so many options very complex function in fact it's so complex that there is whole books just about plotting and how to make better graphs in R uh, in the description of the video I recommend one uh, one book that I found it really really interesting the name is uh, uh, R Graph Cookbook and it's like recipes for creating the most variety uh, graphs and they are really simple code really well explained I really like this book is, uh, uh, I urge you to take a look and how, how how powerful the plotting of R is you can even plot 3D maps and uh, various statistical analysis with just a few comments so yeah I would recommend you to take a look in this in this book but I will give you a brief overview of how it works so let me start by declaring like a, a variable for me to plot it's just a sequence from 0 to 10 with a very small step so it's okay so I will use this variable as my x-axis and then I will create a y-axis of the si sign of x and I will just plot the x and y-axis uh, let me show you the comments so that's how I plot it's just like the x-axis and the y-axis and so well this is just a sin function right mm okay so really simple right so l l just a new example I will, I will make the y-axis be the exponential function x times x and plot again so you can see now it's this new function uh, you can plot also data frames for instance I create a data frame with the x and y two columns if I just ask to plot that, it will just plot like plot the same thing that we we seen before. See. Um, other other um, options of the plot is, for instance, the, the main, which the, defines a title for the plot. So you can see that I called this exponential function, and here it is the title here. Um, I can also uh, name the um, the axis, like for instance, with the x label uh, parameter. You, I, I name it the x axis, and so here we can see the name is there now. But it it also assumes the value, the name of the variable that you passed as the name of it. So can also rename your variable and there is many types of, of graphs uh, for instance this uh, each measurement is, is represented by a, a dot a little sphere uh, but you can replace that with a you can put this parameter here called type and pass L which is from lines and then your graph now it's a, a line instead of all these dots uh, what else uh, oh, you can you can uh, add new elements in this plot. For instance, with the command lines. So you already have a plot. See, I, I didn't close it, and then I use the command lines to add a new line with the just uh, the y divided by two, and now I have two lines in the graph. Uh, so I can keep adding. There is the points uh, also. So if I want to add points. Uh, y divided by 3, see here, points, y divided by 3 and th there is so many options, I'm just showing how how the basic thing works there is the bar plot for instance, if you just want to make a plot of bars here, I just put the increasing from 1 to 3 y you only provide one axis, right, here's the graph and let's take a look in the weather data that we have let me get the the function that we have been using get weather ok 
Okay. Uh, for instance, R has a built-in function for a histogram. So I will make a histogram of the temperature, the max temperature. It's the hist uh, function. And it's simple like that. It already provides a plot. See, here I have the histogram of the temperature max. Then I can ask for a histogram of the, temper the minimum temperature. And there is even more complex functions, like for instance, there is the density function, which provides a density analysis of the temperature, see? And here I just ask for the density of it, but I can plot this density, and it will automatically create a plot of for density. So you just plot the density itself, and R already knows what to do with it, so here is a, a plot of the density the temperature, the minimum temperature. Uh, it's important to note that the plot, well not only the plot, many of the R commands, they change their behavior regarding to the type of the variable that you pass into it. So if I give a, to the plot just uh, two vectors, it will automatically assume that one vector is the x axis and the, the other vector is the y axis. But if I give a, a density distribution, it will already automatically know that this is a density distribution and will make a graph according to it. If I give it a, a map, it will use another completely different function to plot this map. So yeah, don't assume that the function is always does the same. doesn't matter the, the type of data. Each data is behaved differently inside of these functions. So. Another really interesting thing that you can do with R is you can uh, ask it to automatically save these plots. So let me run a code here and show you how it works. So here I created a for a looping structure from three to six, three to six because I I just used the third to the sixth um, columns of my weather data, which is temp mean, temp max, and precipitation. So I put this value in i, and I create a PNG. PNG is a type of uh, figure that we usually use in publications, and and it's a, it's a good format for images. PNG receives as a parameter the file name, and here I just create a name with the number um, attached to the extension PNG, so Windows know that this is a figure. Then I plot the density of this specific variable. See here, I'm selecting just the specific column. And then I use this command dev off, which f uh, like finishes the graph that I'm doing and saves it. So basically, I created three graphs automatically from th with the density distribution of each of one of each one of these columns. So let me take a look here on the on the on the files. Here, so the files are there. So now, now they are like Windows figures that I can, you know, export and uh, do like send to publications or whatever. So it's really, really cool feature. Feature. Um, the PNG function have many many parameters it's like you can increase the size of the letters you can increase the size of the figure itself you can create huge uh, graphs you know when it's really necessary to have a high resolution and another thing that I would like to talk about the plot is the par comment it, it, it is used to change parameters of plotting so for instance here I, I would just show the MFRO par so th the usage is like that you you would say par and then you inside of par there is many many of graphical parameters and here I just change one of them I change the mfro which tells us how many plots in each graph there will be and so uh, here I ask them to be two by two so four graphs per 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 plot per per, per figure and then here I'm going to um, here I'm going to to make a a, a loop to to plot all all them. Okay. 
Okay, so it's the same. It's the same loop that I did before. But now the the graph generator is different. Look, it's like uh, all them are in the same figure. So uh, it's important to note when you change the par, it like sticks to your to your session. So until you close R, it will be always there. Uh, unless there is some tricks to avoid that behavior, like as, uh, assigning par to a variable, then modifying it, and when you finish, just assign this variable back to par. But yeah, I will. Leave, this is more advanced. I will leave this for for you to to find out how to do it. And so by now you should start realizing how powerful R is, right? Like you you can you know create automatic uh, analysis of your data and run it every day or for different data sets with a minimal change in your code. You can uh, I don't know. I have. Uh, people there in the department generating hundreds of maps every day with data you know with new data because it's, it's so easy to generate new graphs and you can you can take a look in each of them at it's really powerful language you should be seeing by now and uh, we are approaching the end of the course by now so uh, so in the next video we are going to talk a little bit about like some more advanced data functions and with these advanced comments that we're going to learn, like how to aggregate uh, <coughs> functions by month, uh, numbers by month, you know, with that we should be able to finish our project. So, see you there in the next video.